What's good everyone, it's ZigZag here. Welcome back to another GeoGuessr video. Today, I've got 10 maps from around the world that will really help you with your GeoGuessr gameplay. They're gonna cover a whole bunch of useful metas ranging from really applicable to really specific. I already did a part one of this playlist, which you can find inside the description. That's gonna be a really good watch before this one because it covers a lot of the most important maps to learn in my opinion. But the maps in today's video are also gonna be really, really useful for getting good guesses. Before we get into the video, I would ask you guys if you could please give this video a like, that would help me out with the algorithm. And I say, let's get into the first one here. So this first one is obviously Russia. We're looking at Russia here. And we are talking about this generation four coverage that came out some months ago. It was discovered that basically the whole country was covered during the summertime. So there's leaves on the trees and all that kind of thing. However, the south of Russia near the Caucasus down here on the bottom left of the screen in the blue, that area was basically exclusively covered during the winter. So if you get around down here in generation four coverage, you should see that none of the trees have leaves. And then generally speaking, the whole landscape should be pretty brown and sad looking like the winter. Okay. Moving from the biggest country in the world to quite a niche but useful hint, I found this one on Plonkit. Shoutouts to all the people whose maps and stuff I'm using in this video. We have a great community full of people willing to share. But in this one, we have a green box that peeks through the window on this highway in Senegal. So if you see this box, which is kind of on a green tinted window, then you should be somewhere along this road and you should get a really, really nice score if you can line up the road angle. Not much else to say about it, but Senegal is definitely one of those countries where you can lose quite a few points. So I thought that was definitely worth including. Okay, next one we have a super applicable hint and that is to do with the guardrail profiles. So in the top of the screen here, you can see we've got A profile, B profile and thin B profile guardrails. And we're looking at the left map to talk about the shape of the guardrails. So by far and away, the most common is the A one. Probably in your country, they use this with the rounded edges. And you can see that in all the red countries here. It's also found in the purple countries as well. But in the purple countries, you can also see that B profile guardrail, which is this one with the flat edges. So most prominently, you see this in Serbia, Croatia, Poland, Denmark, Ireland, Germany, Turkey, Montenegro, and I think that is about it. And also then Czechoslovakia, which have the thin B profile. But this can really help for North Macedonia and Serbia toss-ups where both countries, you don't use the antenna. So they can really be distinguished in that way. And then also can be used to distinguish um, Croatia from the surrounding countries as well, minus Serbia. And then yeah, on like no moving panning zooming games or something like that, it can be certainly very useful. Also Ireland UK could definitely be useful there as well. And then also we have the colors of the reflectors that you find inside the guardrails themselves. So most prominently I would say here is the fact that Spain should always have have the yellow uh, reflectors inside the guardrail. And then definitely just noticing that there are some of these countries that don't use red and trying to memorize those is probably quite a good use of your time. Okay, here we have two maps that show corn production in the United States and over in Europe. I think that this one is definitely something that you may have an intuitive sense of, but looking at some maps can really help out here. So there's definitely a belt of countries and this kind of latitude here that runs through Northern Italy um, certainly has a a lot of corn production. You can, you can see that Croatia has a whole lot, but it seems to only be divided into two subregions, whereas a lot of these other countries are divided into many subregions. So that's why it appears to be so much. But really, it's France that makes the most Italy, Romania, Hungary, Serbia. All these countries that run roughly along this latitude here are where you're going to see the most corn. Obviously, it's not that helpful, but uh, you can definitely exclude some countries, some of these more northern countries, if you see corn. And uh, definitely, some places are much more likely than others. So definitely good to know for France, I would say and probably for the Central Eastern European countries as well. Then moving over to the United States here, we can see the Illinois, Iowa, this kind of Midwestern region is easily where you find the most corn. However, there are certain counties out here in North California, in Washington state, for example, where you can see it. And it seems to be worth keeping in mind that along the Mississippi here, you actually do get quite a bit being grown. So definitely a helpful thing for the US, which is such a huge country. And uh, it's good to keep in mind that you're often, often going to see it in a state like Illinois or Iowa. Okay, next up, we are looking at some Indonesian metas. So Indonesia is another one of these huge countries. That's why I included this one in the video. Basically, when the country is so huge, you just want to get as close as possible. And, and some of these architectural hints, I've definitely used myself. So let's run through the most important ones here. So the Balinesian crown. So I would say the Balinesian 
Ancient Crown is the most important here in the pink. So Bali is a small island, but obviously you're gonna get massive points if you get there. And most roofs are tiled in quite a high quality looking tile. Generally speaking, Bali's got some money and they often have these crowns or shrines at the top of all of their roofs. I would say maybe 80% of houses that have like a tiled roof would have this. I'm actually not sure what the exact proportion is, but it's definitely common enough that if you're in Bali and you're in a town, you should be able to see it, I would say. Then in the Nusa Tengara Islands, we have thatched roofs being fairly common. And then on the whole island of Java, it's very common to see tiled roofs, which definitely sets it apart from some of the other islands of Indonesia. But this particular shape of roof is quite common in Java. Then over in Sumatra, we have some of the most unique ones, I would say. These ones with the super dramatic incline and the points are very common in West Sumatra. Then in North Sumatra, you have this one that's more shaped like a banana without such impressive pointy bits at the end. And then also on this island, Nias, you have this bulge shaped roof sometimes. Now these ones aren't as common, but they are more distinctive. So whenever you see them, you can pretty much instantly send. Okay, next up we have Sulawesi crossed beams and that one can be found basically all over the island. I feel like I've definitely seen this maybe in Sumatra before or elsewhere, but it's most commonly in Sulawesi. So you should you should definitely consider guessing there if you see it. And uh, yeah, it kind of looks like two swords crossed over each other. Very cool actually, very, very nice architecture, but good to keep in mind. And then over here we have the South Sulawesi um, um, saddleback looking roof here. So it's not as pointy as the one we saw over in Sumatra, definitely similar looking though. And that should basically only be found in South Sulawesi. Okay, so let's move on to New Zealand. And we all know that uh, New Zealand has these holy poles. You can definitely see them kind of similar to the ones you'd see in Hungary or something like that. But these ones are actually not really found all over the country. So according to this person's research, it should be found either in the deep south of the South Island or basically all over the North Island in varying places. But in Easily most commonly found in Auckland and this very, very south part. So yeah, um, actually not something I had realized, but I did kind of get the vibe that when I saw these, I was often southern and it turns out to be confirmed. Very useful and a really, really good re resource. This one's well made and uh, definitely, definitely you can hedge your bets whenever you see these. Look around at the landscape and use that plus this infra infographic to uh, make a really good guess. Okay, next one here, we are on Froggy's uh, guide to finish road science. And uh, Froggy here has uh, pointed out that we have a lot of bilingual signs in certain areas. So, so if you see a bilingual sign, and this of also often counts for street signs, by the way, not just for big um, official looking signs, it's a pretty good bet that you'll be somewhere on the south coast or on the kind of the southwestern coast here. So yep, yeah, definitely worth keeping in mind. Then also you may see certain areas over here and most importantly in the Orland Islands where you only have Swedish. It is kind of interesting that you are actually in Finland with only Swedish, but yep, yeah, it can really be seen and uh, definitely an interesting thing to keep in mind. Then over in the north, you can see we have Sami as well, which is one of the uh, kind of Aboriginal languages of Finland. And uh, yeah, you get bilingual signs very commonly up there. So if you feel like you might be way up in the north end, look for a second language that looks a bit strange and uh, you may just be in that north end of Finland. There's also some other stuff here. I'll have this document linked in the description, of course, so you can go check it out for yourself. Uh, but definitely some of these like more common uh, names, uh, like road name, cartoon, that kind of thing. Uh, very good to know. Okay, next one here is not a map, but I thought it was so useful that I wanted to include it anyway. We do have here the Canadian bollards, which are really, really useful for knowing, in my opinion. Uh, starting off here, we have the Alberta bollards, which are probably the most most iconic because they're the most common, I would say. And the Alberta bollards tend to look like this one. This one's a little bit more rare, I would say. And uh, you can find them generally near intersections and out on highways and whatnot. Typical bollard stuff, but definitely the most common of them. Northwestern Territory is looking very similar to the Alberta one, um, but I guess you can use the landscape to tell the difference between them. And then here we have Quebec. Quebec is looking like the Australian bollard. You can often see the white either side of it. So yeah, definitely looks quite similar to an Australian bollard. Then we also have a green variant as well. And uh, the Quebec ones are the ones that are easily most likely to be connected to guardrails as well. So if you see it connected to a guardrail and it looks at all like this, then in North America, you should just be going straight to Quebec. Okay, British Columbia is the only one that I would say has like the reflector shape similar to what you have over in Europe. So that's a good way to remember that. It does not, it's not round like these other ones. And it, yeah, it has like kind of the enclosed inside black reflector shape as opposed to the Quebec one, which is just like a looking like an Australian bollard. Okay, then Manitoba and Saskatchewan, this one, I, I 
I, I suppose based on this infographic that these ones are just Manitoba. I think this one's the more common one, which you can see in both provinces. So good to keep in mind. Um, and uh, it does look similar to the Alberta one. So don't get it confused. Just the black top for Manitoba and Saskatchewan. Okay, next one, I have uh, one that's not entirely obvious when you first look at it, but do let me take you through this because this is actually quite a good discovery that someone's made recently. So the country of Ukraine is probably notoriously difficult to region guess. You have more hills in the west and it's more flat to the east and then it's kind of a bit drier to the south. Sure, that's the basics, but that doesn't really get you that close, does it? Well, this is kind of an interesting little uh, map here. We have in the red, the standard Ukrainian car, which has like the red back and the long antenna. Okay, so that is pretty much found all over the country, but it gets interesting here when we move to the green dots on the map, which actually refer to the red car without an antenna so it's quite often in ukraine that you get um these roads without an antenna and you get it particularly over here in the west and then it kind of runs through the middle of the country there is this road south but generally speaking hedging in kind of the middle latitude of the country works quite nicely for green if you see hills go kind of in this region and if you don't then maybe in this northern or like kind of central southern region here so that's pretty useful and then most useful of all and the reason i included this is because then we have the blue section here and the blue section is no car at all you can't see the red car but you do see a short antenna just in the typical like european style and that one is only found in the center so look at that that's uh, that's actually going to get you a really nice region guess if you click here you're guaranteed to get good points and if you think you're maybe in kiev or something like that definitely guess in this region here um and you're gonna get good points finally then of course you have the donetsk car which uh, is the black car the russian car so that's definitely useful and also donetsk is covered in like winter or like autumn coverage so definitely also also useful. Okay, so that's pretty much it for Ukraine there. Actually, really useful tips, and uh, I would highly recommend just committing this to memory, vaguely at least. And if you wanted to get super nerdy about it, learning these roads could also be super, super useful because the coverage in Ukraine is not full. It only basically runs along the major highways. Okay, here, next one, we are looking at India, and India has these auto rickshaws, these tuk-tuks, and uh, it is actually a, cer a certified meta that there are certain areas that have, you know, some colors and certain areas that have others. So clearly the most common here is the green tuk-tuk with the yellow top, and that one is found mostly in the north here. And uh, yeah, so if you, if you see that one, definitely a lot of this northern coverage is most likely to be seen. And by the way, these tuk-tuks are only placed where the coverage currently sits. So for example, in Kerala, there's no coverage yet, so we don't have the tuk-tuk on the map here yet. But most importantly, I would say is the Maharashtra black and white, uh, black and yellow um, tuk-tuk, which seems to be, I'm not sure if that's actually specific to Maharashtra, but in the current like state of the coverage, when you see that, you should be guessing there. And then also we've got this blue one here, can't quite make out what that one is, but definitely uh, keep that in mind. And then also this yellow one is more Southern. So uh, I would say that's pretty useful and um, yeah, good to keep in mind. India is a big country and as, uh, while more world maps are going to start including this coverage, it's really worthwhile to, uh, you know, have something to work with. And if you use language, uh, the languages that you see around you, plus the tuk-tuks, I think you're going to get a good score. And not to mention they're very, very common indeed as well. Okay, that pretty much takes me to the end of the video. Guys, I have a lot more of these saved on my PC. So if you want to see more, let me know by liking the video, commenting and all that kind of thing. Um, thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. Subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I've got plenty more coming. Um, check out my tutorials playlist on the main menu of my YouTube channel if you are, are interested in learning more. And I'll see you guys in a video very soon. So till then, goodbye.